Thank you for visiting Angel Kings, where we show you how to invest in America's next top startups. Let's take a look at the top five growth hacking software techniques. So now I want to talk to you about the top five growth hacking strategies. And when we say growth hacking, what do we mean? So let's define that. When we say growth hacking, that means, particularly as a startup, what is it that you can spend the least amount of money on to get the biggest amount of return? And by return, we mean the number of people that will go to your website and actually purchase or learn more about your company. A growth hacker is someone who understands optimization, knows how to test variations on websites, someone who he or she really understands the importance of connecting to the consumer, the end user, in a short amount of time. Because remember, in our book, Kings of Races, we talk about the fact that you only get between five to 10 seconds, and even sometimes only five seconds, to capture the attention or the desire, or the want of the consumer. So you've got a, a growth hacker has to move quickly and has to adapt to make the consumer want to buy your product. So now that we've defined a growth hacker, there are five things here on this slide that we prepared that 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 define uh, you know are important and you can do for no charge, right? I mean, you can actually uh, spend zero dollars and have an optimal return of people buying your product. Um, so so here are the five free growth hacking strategies. Number one, on your website, and I assume you have a website. If you don't, well, you, you're probably uh, the only one who's who's taking this course <laughs> who doesn't have a website. Uh, they're very inexpensive, so get a website. But once you have the website, add social proof. That's the number one thing you should do. Social proof means showing case studies of people that have used your product, how they used it, and what the result was. And as a startup, you might not have those at first, or right? you might not have already sold your product. And in our book and in this course, we say, well, that's a big no-no. You need to go find somebody who can become a product evangelist, who can buy your product, use it. Maybe your subscription service, an online service, maybe you're selling a, a, a product or something that, that is shipped directly to the consumer. But you've got to find one or two products more, even more optimally, three people that that will use your product, and then ask them to use, or you know, ask them if, if you can use them as a case study to put their face and a brief testimony on the website. Even better is to have a video, not unlike this, of those three consumers and uh, testifying to uh, you know th how they use your product and how great you were as a you know as the CEO and how you always looked out for them, that can help you big time. Social proof is something we identify. I mean, even going back to, to intense marketing courses, you know that there's a bandwagon effect where once someone sees someone else using a product, you want to do it too. So add social proof. It literally costs nothing to do other than finding up to three people that you can profile on your website. And that'll give the, the, the end consumer uh, an idea of how they might also benefit. The second thing is, Create a 15-second sign-up process. I say 15 seconds. That's the absolute maximum amount of time that you have to get somebody engaged, somebody to sign up to your website. Now, there is a distinction here. If you're charging for a website, meaning you've got a product they have to buy and they have to sign up for it, that can take longer. And in fact, 99% of the time, it, it takes longer than 15 seconds. Unless you're on Amazon, you've got the Buy It Now, which is literally one click. 99.99% of the time, if it's a paid process, it's going to take more than 15 seconds. But when we're addressing startups, possibly just like you, who's got something, you know, maybe your membership base, maybe you're a freemium service, you should have a website and, and, and UI, UX, user interface, user experience process that takes no more than 15 seconds for somebody to fully sign up, get an email, and start engaging in your platform, your site, period. Um, anything more than that is is you're you're, you're going to see a big drop off here where the user just flees and is not interested. So get your your sign up process down to 15 seconds. You can test that with friends, with family, whoever, and make sure they're critical and honest with you uh, about how long it took to sign up. The third thing is build in viral tools, and um, you know 
if you, when we say viral tools, we mean tools that cost you nothing, right? So let's say you're a freemium site, um, and you know one of the ways in which the the user can sign up is they go to your landing page and they say, "I'm going to put my email because this service or this product looks cool." Well, you can create a simple and free uh, landing page where, in order for them to get off the wait list, they have to share. You know, they have to actually share a custom link that they get. Um, now, there's a site we've ranked uh, top landing pages later in our course, but there's a site called Launch Rock um, that is great for that. So you can actually put up a, a landing page for your site and then have an email sign up box, which is free for the user. But in order for them to get off the wait list, they have to share their link and they get priority access. A company that did a great job of this, I, I believe, was Robinhood. Uh, which is a stock trading platform, stock investing trading, and um, they actually built in a really viral way to get thousands of users off the wait list. Um, you know, you'd sign up for free, get on the wait list, and then share share the custom link, and then you know you would get bumped up based on the number of people who sign up. So look at viral tools and how you can use those for your startup. The fourth thing, which you know, potentially should be number one, because it's I can't stress this enough in our book, Kings of Races, as well as through this course, but write content, okay, write content, and particularly write content that is worthy of being shared. Um, you have to oftentimes spend money to make money by writing content about your particular niche, your industry, or whatever you're interested in. Um, you will start to not only be found on Google, but, but have other people share it and identify you as the thought leader or somebody who understands uh, what they're buying. Okay, so write content. I recommend writing at least one article a week uh, that has five to ten pointers about you know your particular industry. Um, let's say you're you know you're selling lawnmowers. Okay, um, and and you know you be, you need to become the expert on lawnmowers. So you've got a, a site that a blog perhaps. Uh, and, and you're writing, you know, types of engines, types of motors, the t best type of gas. But write at least one article a week, which comes out to 50 articles, roughly 50 articles a year, um, that are optimized and shared on your blog. And then vis-a-vis -vis, uh, a great social platform such as Buffer, that's B-U-F-F-E-R, uh, where you can share your content. Now, again, the last of, of the top five free growth strategies is do things that don't scale. Now. You're, you're probably wondering what I mean here, particularly because we're, we're doing a course here on, on startups and scaling and moving quickly. But when we say do things that don't scale, I'll give you an example. Airbnb, which is now a multi-billion dollar company, probably worth 15, 20 plus billion dollars at the time of this course. Um, they actually had a brilliant and, and growth hacker mindset from the beginning. So just five or 10 people at their office before they became hundreds if not thousands of employees and they had people that were literally going on Craigslist and finding people that were listing their location or their their space to rent their house or, or apartment and they would reach out to them individually and bring up the fact that Airbnb was a great option and it took months Everyone thinks that Airbnb was an overnight success. That is absolutely not true. Airbnb did things that did not scale. And if you think this stuff just happens, you build it and they'll come, you're absolutely wrong. Every company, Dropbox or you know, uh, Airbnb or bigger, even bigger companies out there like Uber had to hit the ground running and doing things that don't scale. So I, I, I hope those were helpful in, in terms of growth hacking strategies. Later on in the course, we'll do some more rankings about software related to that, uh, but let's keep going. If you want to learn and get the inside access to both startups and startup investing, go to angelkings.com backslash course today.